What up, everybody? Just answer the question, episode five. Cinco, we made it this far. <laughs> Yay, defying all odds and expectations. Here we go. It's tough to stick on a uh, weekly schedule, believe it or not. And I think with everything going on, we got a lot of going on here, um, it's been even more challenging. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to just... Go with the flow on this Sunday here, beautiful Sunday morning. And it's just, I want to touch up on what what is the great divide that we got here? You know, what is this? And what the heck is going on? Where's where's all this going? Because we've already been dealing with some crazy stuff. That's what spawned all this. In a weird way, it's changed my life in so many ways for the better. Um, and that is because of going inward, you know, and not getting caught up in this whirlwind of like I didn't know what was going on before all this you know at least now my priorities are to take care of immediately what's you know I can touch and, and deal with and what's tangible in my life and and then stay and try and touch with the rest of the world out there you know <clears throat> and and what is the world out there what is what is a country you know countries are a little place where they usually all speak the same language and follow some laws hopefully and peacefully handle their business um, you know, I, I'm very patriotic, but if you look over the history of the world, there's been a lot of countries that have kind of come and gone. Like the Rome of, you know, a thousand years ago is very different than the Rome of today. And so you just have to put into perspective certain things because what is patriotism? Patriotism is a loyalty to those countries. But I'm reading a book right now. It's mind blowing. And I've said this before already on the podcast. The similarities between 1918 and 1920 to 2018 and 2020, there are really, there's a lot that's there. It's not like some blatant, obvious 10th grade stuff. It's some real deal, like, you know, it's, it's just interesting. You see how maybe it's a 100-year cycle, maybe... Um, I don't even know. Maybe it's a technology... I think it's a combination of a lot of those things. Technology the cycle of life that maybe we don't understand or see because we only live one generation at a time. You know, we only see that much of it and then we're gone, you know? And so that's why I, I tend to argue with people about studying history so that you can get the perspective of 10 generations in order to help you understand this generation, you know, or whatever generation you're in at the time. If you're a big, you know, you live in 10 lives over there. You know, and so within patriotism, that's being proud of something and being proud of your country and, and your situation and your community. You know, I think that it's more important to even be more in the community mind here. And, you know, that's being proud of your, what you know, that's what you love, your situation. If you don't love your situation, then you're probably going to be protesting, you know. And I'm personally disgusted with the fact that, like, it's not a clear-cut situation. You know, shout-outs to the Young Money show there, Apple News, but there's an interesting thing. Lil Wayne interviews Dr. Dre, and Dr. Dre says, you know, the dude should have been just cuffs on him, first-degree murder, and, and that's true. Like, if you screw up in your field, you know, here you got these dudes out here supposedly doing their job, and someone was in charge, and someone should have been like, yo, at about 30 seconds, let's let's, you know, let's move on. Let's, let's take this to the processing part of this. I, you know, it, it baffles anybody's mind as to why the hell what happened happened. And it's completely unacceptable in many ways. Um, but then I think just going and burning down half of the, you know, like sh making sure if, if you can burn a building down, like did that building have a direct connection to it? And I, and that's, that's what they talk about in that, the little Wayne show, which is interesting is, is it a connection? Is it a single, you know, thing? You know, do we blame everybody? Do we, we need change? And that's the most important thing. You know, Bob Marley said a hungry mob is an angry mob, you know, and whether we're hungry for justice or we're hungry for actual food, you know, you have to listen to that and you have to be willing to make a change. I really, what I want to try and say on this, and I just, I don't know what that's the whole point of this, is... I've been saying this for years. You divide this place up, you know. Now you got a, a separate 
American flag for this group and a separate looking American flag for that group. Like that was the most stupid idea anyone could have done. The American flag has to be the American flag. One of them. That's it. And, and, and you have to promote in everything you do, even if you're biased to one side, that at the end of the day, it's more important that all Americans work together. Otherwise, what is the point of the country? You know, what is the point of, of putting all of our money and resources and our, our time and energy? That's the most important thing. You know, why wouldn't we just up and go somewhere or seed from the union? You know, I mean, oh boy, that, that's controversial. But it's like, what, what's the point? You want to be, we want to feel safe. You want to know that that tax money that's paying for these police departments, that we're going to be getting courteous and professional treatment. You know, and there's a lot to the justice system that needs change, but there's a lot of the old school like laws and principles that were put into place because of mob rule and because of things that have already happened in the past. They just didn't all have cell phones. So, you know, we need the unity will will help bring the change. I don't think we're going to get any kind of positive change without first being united. Now, if we want to really break down any kind of divide, quote unquote, because I would be just as angry and willing to protest and willing to even economically protest by not buying certain things. You fuck up the economy if you do that. It actually is really effective. But what? We have to be organized in order for that to happen. We all have to be on the same page and we all have to be willing to not go ape shit, violent, destructive, crazy mode. And boo to anyone that's, you know, in that zone. Because we really want change. We got children we want to grow up in this and make it a better place than what was handed to us. I know that's my mission. That's what I'm trying my best to do with what resources I have. I wish I could have some more, sure. But what I've learned in the last five years is to hunker down and work with what you got, baby. And if you're still here, then you're still here. Cheers. And so that, that you know, th this change <clears throat> that I think would come with some unity, a little bit of love here. Yeah, I may not understand you. I may not be you, but you're on my team. And if the push comes to shove, we're going to be, we're in this together and we should act like it. You know, the big divide truly is maybe economics, rich and poor. But in a capitalist society, that's supposed to interchange and constantly fluctuate. You know, a new industry pops up and now all of a sudden, boom, you got like fortunes made and things, you know, that, that's part of the, the, the good. That's the American dream. That's, that's part of the really positive part of the American dream. Why people... You know, why my Irish immigrant boss, when I was a young man working in Boston in construction, said he came to this country to find a better opportunity, to roll the dice. And he knew it wasn't guaranteed to just, just to get a chance to get up to the craps table and roll those red, white, and blue dice. Which anyone that's born here is trying to do the same thing. Unless your grandpa and your dad really worked painstakingly hard to maintain their industry and pass it on to you. And if that's happened, you should thank them. You should, you should constantly thank them because that's a blessing. There's times when I'm like, man, I should have been a funeral director. We let two generations of business just fizzle out into nothing. And now that industry is still work. You know, people are still dying. Guaranteed work. Recession proof. <laughs> Sorry, not laughing at that. It's just, it's dark humor. That's all. I'm guilty of that. But I do mean everything with respect, you know. The change would be more industry, you know, here, more opportunities, more, you know, and now we're in a situation, you know, you know it's all going to change. So just get ready for that. And again, you know, what do you do? I think you got to write letters to senators and you got to do more than just kind of complain on Facebook and 
and this is myself included, you know, take part in those city council meetings that they have. Show up there. And, and, and when they're talking about the police department and the budgets, that's your real deal opportunity to get into the guts of the machine and be heard. And the few times I've been and I need to go more because I'm really interested and I'm intrigued by it. But the few times I've been, there's like nobody there. There's always like one crazy citizen who just has the time and energy. But we all need to start putting in that time and energy to participate, to be actively informed. But And not just, dude, you, you got to understand it is not through Facebook and your ranting online that is ever going to truly make any kind of change. I mean, let me just say this about Twitter for a hot second. Let me get this off my, my chest. You know, that, that's like some opinionated personal stuff that someone was able to digitally put on a platform that you could sit there while you're on the john and type some shit out and tweet it. I mean, look at the word itself. Twitter is like, and the actual word is bird chatter. You know, birds on a wire. So it's just that, look at it. Look at what you're participating in. So you cannot take that so seriously like it's some official proclamation and maybe if our elected officials are elected they should be denied a twitter account if it's that's what we're going with or if we're truly some free speech bastion utopia then okay understand that these people's tweets are their own personal thing this is like them getting you know now, some people take this shit way too serious, and that's my thing. Even the president of the United States, if, if we didn't give a fuck what was said on Twitter, think about what I just said, and I'm sorry to curse to all the people that are offended by bad words, but let me say it again nicely. If we didn't care about what people tweeted, and think about it, it's not an official statement. It's not a bill being introduced on the floor. It's, it's this literally digital chatter that we take seriously if we did not take that seriously it wouldn't even exist have you ever thought about it like that i mean who cares what so and so blankety blank blank tweets who cares really you actually it's your option to even look at it you could say no i'm not going to look at any tweets for 4 days and you would still be alive. Oh, my God. You might not be as informed, I guess. I mean, really, what do you lose? And we go crazy over these damn tweets. So there we go. I said it. A tweet is not an official statement. It's something that if the power goes out, you're done. If, they, if their server, you know, whatever. It's just, it's, it's, don't lose sight of that. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm watching people getting way too heated over bird chatter. So, there. There, I did it. Yay, me. <laughs> Boo, Twitter. So, that leads me to, you know, how do we make a change? How do I make a change? What do I do, you know? I, um... I'm trying to teach a little one right now, and, and that's where I see the most effective usage of that. And in teaching, you know, it's all big ups to anyone that's a teacher, anyone that has to teach anybody anything and goes, oh, my God, this is, I just need more patience. But teaching is a magical, mystical, beautiful art form. When you instruct someone and you share knowledge and you spread something from the past and you give that to them, and what is it? It's not just plugging information in, inserting a bunch of facts, you know, into a hard drive. It's problem solving, street smarts, decision making, time management, constructive criticism, communication, compassion. If you teach someone that, you give them their toolkit, <clears throat> teach them how to use those tools, then... I think that they can really do something about it because there's always going to be a problem. There's always going to be fighting. There's always going to be greed. 
it'll never truly always get solved forever. It'll, it, it's like this, okay, cycle again with the cycles, a hundred year cycle or whatever it is. So a hundred years from now, there's going to be some crazy, all different technology. And if there's a hundred years from now, who knows? We don't know. You could tell me you talked blue in the face about a, in a hundred years from now, but not a damn one of us know. So get your DeLorean and then, then we'll go check it out. So that's my thing. You know, I, I was taught when I went to college before I dropped out when I was a music ed major. Um, you know, they were like, the reason why we teach the arts in school is to help the human being be more rounded as an individual. Not so that we have a bunch of Van Goghs and box running around. That might happen. That's great. But all people to understand and appreciate arts, and that's, that, that includes culinary. That's, I'm talking our true culture is your, you know, your fashion, your food, the sound of it, the soundtrack. And as diverse as the American soundtrack is, it's a beautiful one. We have so much epic music in this country that's made in this country that comes from other countries but is changed somehow by coming here. As I look at the Jamaican flag. <laughs> you know, I, it's cool. There's a, there's a really cool side to it all if you stay positive and don't get all bent out of shape. You know? Divide and conquer. That's an old school strategy. So be careful. And pay attention to that. The whole point of this, the great divide, the unity thing, getting back to what, what is a place of that. I'd like to see that more. You know, if, if you're listening, if this makes any kind of sense to you and you're like, man, yeah, he's right. Look for that. Notice no one's just bigging up anybody like that anymore. They big up their own crew or their own style. There's so much love within that. But there's really hardly, it's like, just, man, you know, hope hope everyone has a good day. <laughs> I don't, it's very broad. More, more of that, more unity. And how can we do that? Maybe we just, you know, we keep trying to do things that unite us and put us together. So support your friends. Tell them you love them. You know, you never know when you're not going to be able to. So take time to appreciate that and focus anger about unruly and unfair things in the most constructive positive solution that you can i think um in in our society the most important thing is is our is, is how we spend our money and we can really make the most change by doing things like boycotting stuff. You know, why, why, why can't we try that before we go right into Richter riot mode? I grew up looking at the civil rights movement. You know, I grew up in the South. The middle school I attended was the black high school during segregation in Eustis, Florida. And so, you know, I saw sit-ins and... and I, th I saw a lot of other things that I was even taught was like, hey, we got to make sure we really stress on trying that. You know, people like Gandhi that made a big difference through really not being violent. And there is, there is an effectiveness to that, man, because what, what happens is you don't rip down the structure that you're about to reclaim. If anything, your defiance and your organized, organized protest will get the point across so much and make the change and then the structure's all still there. We don't have to f rebuild a, a business of a citizen who owned a liquor store. It was like, why did my shit have to burn down? The hell did I do in all this? And that's fair. You know, it, it is all just opinions, but all those opinions eventually, if they're put properly through the proper channels, will overlap and there will be a common thread, a common sense 
river that we can all flow down and pretty much get a majority of what we're looking to get here. It's never going to be perfect and it's never going to be solved so that that's solved forever. I think that the police need to understand you're given a badge and a gun for a reason. You should be shot at first before you even draw your weapon. You should be attacked before you even use physical force beyond what a set of handcuffs in the backseat of your squad car is for. I grew up watching cops. I mean, I never... It don't make no sense. It don't make a lick a bit of sense. And if a line's crossed, then, then people need to be made examples of, and that's why that happens, so that it doesn't happen on a regular basis. So that the professionalism of the industry, of any industry, is maintained. That's what unions uphold. And there's a right and a wrong way of doing it. So I don't want to ramble about it. It's just obviously it really affects things and you start to see the dominoes go and you're like, oh boy, can we try something economically first here even? Boycott. There you go. On a much cooler note, uh, working on a song with Rose, Nat Blues, big ups to anyone that's listened to it. We're watching the numbers. Um, I did register it in a songwriting competition, so who knows? So say a little prayer for her that, you know, she's getting recognized through her school already for music, and it's pretty cool at six years old. So she's got a good vibe. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and we have... A lot of fun doing it it's it's been such a cool addition to our lives you know is writing songs together and she makes little posters rose and dad i guess that's the name of the band <laughs> for now <laughs> so there you go life moves on life is good um i got some really cool interviews coming up uh musicians we're going to interview so please stay tuned to that this this week was more of a what the, what the heck's going on, I guess. And uh, big ups once again to all teachers. I think that teachers should be paid as much as lawyers. It would really set a new tone for the education system and what it truly means to turn out a generation after generation of just really smart, skilled, full tool bag individuals. People who are well-rounded and make the right decisions. So big ups to that. All the teachers everywhere. Stay safe, people. We're all going to watch the news all weekend. Try not to do that too much, too. You know, if you can, take time to just get out and do something in your... If it's just your porch, you know, and you got a few plants, take extra good care of them. Um, but just do something that's inward. I guess that's what I can say. I love you guys all. We're going to play some Nat Blues on the way out. Um... Stay tuned next week. Like I said, we got some really cool interviews coming up. And uh, one love, everybody. Thank you for listening. Um, the featured songs this week, uh, we're going to do, I'm going to do a link with that song America again, just because it's all going down. And there's some cool stuff in that if you haven't heard the song yet. My dad's doing... Uh, the constitution in it pretty cool the song in the beginning is this one i just released called this is your life so check it out on soundcloud if you haven't please and we're going to close today with roseland's new epic blues song nap blues 
super proud of this one. So please enjoy. Please stay safe. One love, one love, one love. Take a nap. No, I don't want Get in to. There right now. No. It's time to take your nap. Come on. Just a short one. You gotta be kidding me. No. If you do, you'll be able to stay up a little bit later now. No, I don't want to. Please, Rose, get in there and take a nap. No. It's time for your nap. It's time no. to take a nap, Rose. Get in there right now. No. No. Right now. Get in no. there. I'll rub your arm. Please go to sleep now. 